So, um, so today we look at chapter five, right? We've we've completed chapter four, um, the work of the Holy Spirit in uh, in Jesus' time, the kind of teachings that the Lord taught about the Holy Spirit, right? Work of the Holy Spirit in Christ's death and resurrection, and also His work prior to the ascension. So we looked at all that. So let's look at chapter five today, right? Um, for online students, let me share the notes. <clears throat> okay, work of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. I've just put out the scripture there for uh, the online students. Okay, so let's turn to the book of Acts. Okay, so some basic questions who wrote the book of acts luke okay so we let's turn to acts chapter 1 okay so acts chapter 1 and verse 1 luke writes and he says the former account i made o theophilus of all that jesus began both to do and teach okay so is luke has He's referring to the gospel and he's saying the former account I made of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach and so on. And then he says that uh, to whom he, uh, uh, until the day in which he was taken up, after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. Right? He gave commandments to the apostles. Uh, through his disciples, through the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on to make a given account of all that happened, all that happened in the early church, everything that the disciples did by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, So in the book of Acts, we see it's, um, it's very exciting to read through the book of Acts because it's about the early church, right? what happened to the early church and it is the new testament church which means that this is the this is the church right what is the church when we say church what do you mean by that word church can anyone tell me church huh church pastor church means ecclesia church means ecclesia yeah, so what does that mean, uh, Gertrude? Uh, it's the body of Christ. Sorry? The believers, the believers, the body of Christ. All the yeah. believers make the All church. All the believers, body of Christ. Okay. Yes. okay. Somebody said something. You were saying something? Same thing? A lot. Okay. Anyone else? Jordan, uh, Jairam? You said something? All up. I'm sorry, we can't hear you. Call out. Um, can you can you repeat that, please, or put it on the chat? Sorry, your audio is not very clear. Okay, so um, you're right. The word is ecclesia, which means the called out ones, right? Ecclesia or the sent out ones, or called out ones. So it refers to the people who are called out of a particular environment called out for a particular purpose okay so we need to understand that church is not a building okay so now when we actually suppose we go down the road we look at a building and we say hey that's a church that's a church right we see okay maybe a cross maybe they put a board uh, you know with scripture so we identify and say that's a church well it's come to mean the place where people actually gather together or the building where you know sunday services and all that happen right but actually church means the people okay it's not the building but it's the people okay so it's the people of god who gather together or who are the called out ones who gather together for a purpose okay so it refers to the gathering yes and nowadays we are talking about the church building more in terms of uh, you know, in, in terms of what church means, right? Um, nothing wrong, but actually it means the gathering of people, okay? So what did, so so the book of Acts is actually, 
carefully about the church, the people, and what God did through the people. Okay. Specifically, what the Holy Spirit did through these people. So there are a lot of references to about the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. Okay. So when we read that, again, we understand that, okay, this is what the Holy Spirit did, or this is what he, uh, you know, he, he did in the lives of people in the early church. So what he did then, he can actually do now in our time because we are the same church, right? We are the church of God, right? Okay, so let's look at a few verses here. So let's look at, let's turn to Acts chapter 1, verses 5 to 8, okay? So I'm just going to read out and I'm going to ask you what you understood, okay? I might, you know, maybe point to one person or, you know, and ask, what, what do you understand from this, okay? So let's read Acts chapter 1. Verses 5 to 8. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Okay, so what do we understand from here? Okay, we see that uh, Lord, the Lord Jesus is referring to what happened, um, you know, during his earthly ministry. That the timing and the context is this he's about, he's resurrected, right? He was dead, he was crucified, dead, and he's, he's now resurrected, and he's talking to the disciples around him. Okay, now if you read through, you see that uh, immediately after this conversation or after this incident, he, is, he ascends into heaven. Okay, so it's, that is the timing. Just before that, he is speaking to them. So he's telling them that John baptized with water. Okay, what does baptism mean? To immerse completely. Okay, the Greek word is baptizo, which means to immerse completely. So John baptized with water, but he says, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay, not many days from now, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now you tell me, um, so what is the reason or what is the outcome of being baptized with the Holy Spirit? Why or uh, what did the Lord, why did the Lord Jesus want the disciples to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. What do you learn from here? Anyone? You, you can just read through the text, right? For verses 5 to 8 and tell me what was the objective? Or what was the... Yeah, sorry. Okay. It's to receive power, right? So he says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power for what? Sorry? Power to be witnesses, right? So that is the, 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 the whole thing, what is called as Holy Spirit baptism. So the Lord is telling his disciples, now this is something that will happen to you. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now, and you shall receive power, and you will be witnesses, right? So you will be, in, in other words, he's saying, you will witness... What does witness mean? Proof? You're saying, when you say, I'm a witness of this event, what does that mean? That means you saw it, okay? And what you're saying is based on testify. what you saw. Testify. Sorry? Testify. Testify, yeah. A witness testifies, which means talks about something that has happened, which they saw beforehand or experienced beforehand. Okay. So, so the Lord is saying, you shall be witnesses. Hey, this is, you will be witnesses. In other words, he's saying you will be witnesses with power. Why? Because you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay. You will be endured with power. Okay. So another thing that we learn, another important thing that we learn from this passage, can you, any other observation? They were looking for the second coming. Sorry? When will you restore the kingdom to Jerusalem? Uh, I mean, um, the 
when will you restore the kingdom to Israel, right? So they were talking about the natural kingdom and he is talking about times and seasons. He said, that's not, yeah, that's one thing that you observe. But particularly about the Holy Spirit, something that we observe there. Okay, to become witnesses. Thank you, Shekhar, Lucy, yeah. Okay. What other thing that we, with, with, that we observe here? Huh? Holy Spirit promise, okay. Yeah, actually, um, if you see, this is what is mentioned in um, Luke chapter 24. Okay, the last chapter of Luke, in verse 49. Um, you know, we, we looked at 5 to 8, right? Acts chapter 1, 5 to 8. If you look at Acts chapter 1 and verse 4, it says, But being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Okay, So this Holy Spirit baptism is actually the promise of the Father. Okay, So he's saying, disciples, you wait. You will receive something. You will experience something. You will go through this experience, which is called Holy Spirit baptism. And this is the promise of the Father. If you look at Luke chapter 24, the last chapter of Luke, and verse 49, okay, you will see the Lord Jesus telling them the same thing. Luke chapter 24, verse 49 says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Okay, so this is Luke, you know, writes that and captures that, and this is before the ascension. So basically the same incident. So we see that the promise of the Father. Okay, right. Okay, what else do we observe here? What else do we understand from here when you see these verses? Okay, one thing that we see is that the Lord Jesus, who was he speaking to? Huh? To his apostles. Sorry? To his apostles. To the apostles, to the disciples. Basically, yeah. he was talking to those who were following him, right? To his followers. And now he's telling them, those who were actually following him as Lord and Savior, he's telling them that you wait and there is the promise of the Father. Okay. So, which means that. For the followers of the Lord, for the disciples of the Lord, the Lord Jesus is promising something, an experience, uh, I, I don't want to call it an event, but he's saying this is the promise of the Father, and this is something I have, in other words, he's saying this is something I want all my followers to receive and to go through. Can we say that? Yeah. Saying is, is because he's telling the disciples, you wait there in Jerusalem till you are endued with power from on high, till you receive the promise of the Father, where you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So we, 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 can, we can conclude that this is for every disciple or every follower of the Lord Jesus. What is, what is for every follower of the Lord Jesus? This baptism of the Holy Spirit. Baptism with the Holy Spirit, baptism in the Holy Spirit, you know, the Greek is the same. The usage is, it can be used interchangeably, right? So this is for every believer, this baptism with the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, okay, let's move on to another one, uh, verse 16, same chapter, verse 16. Okay. We read something else, right? Men and brethren, this scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a Jew, who became a guide to all who arrested Jesus. Okay, so what scripture? What was he referring to? Okay. This scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David. Okay, so he's referring to uh, what the psalmist. The David, the psalmist, what he prophesied in one of the psalms, right, about the kind of death that the Messiah would die, and uh, about how he would be betrayed. Okay, so he's saying this had to be full. The scripture was actually fulfilled 
and how uh, you know how was it brought about the holy spirit let's look at verse 16 again read through okay acts chapter 1 verse 16 okay the scripture had to be fulfilled which the holy spirit spoke before by the mouth of david concerning judas who became a guide to those who arrested jesus so the holy spirit spoke by the mouth of david okay so which means that david was prophesying the holy spirit caused him to prophesy the holy spirit spoke these words out through the mouth of uh, david concerning judas okay so the way in which the messiah would die how he would be, would die how he would be betrayed was prophesied in the psalms right so he's he's referring to that and he's saying this is what this is how it was. Um, it was already prophesied. Okay. okay. It was by the work of the Holy Spirit. So, which means that the Holy Spirit, who knows the end from the beginning, right? Who knows everything? He is God. He is omniscient, all knowing. So, He knows the end from the beginning. And He will, you know, the Lord Jesus, what did He say? The Holy Spirit, when He comes, He will teach you, He will remind you of what I teach you. And the, he also said that he will tell you of things to come. What will happen in the coming days. Okay, So Holy Spirit being God, he knows what is in the future. He will, he is well able to tell us of what is to come. And he did so in, in the life of David, he, who David actually prophesied um, about the Messiah and about his betrayal and so on. Okay. Okay, let's look at uh, another verse. Okay. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Okay. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay. So this is, um, you know, what we have studied before about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and how the disciples who were waiting in that upper room, about 120 of them, right? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, it says they were they were actually there, um, and it was the day of Pentecost. Okay, day of Pentecost, which means it's fifty days. Pentecost meaning fifty or fifty days from the day of the feast of first fruits. Okay, so these were all Je Jewish feasts, right? So they were fiftieth day, which was the feast of the Pentecost. So uh, they were waiting there. Now on that day something supernatural happened what happened they were all in a in a in a in, in one accord in one place it says and they came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting so they were indoors and there was the sound of a rushing mighty wind which means it's like you know it's like a storm which is blowing outside but it was actually indoors Nothing was happening outside, but it was in the house. You know, there was a sound of a rushing mighty wind. And then what, what else do we notice there? Something supernatural happened. What else happened there? See, huh? Yeah? Yeah, before that? Before that, what happened? You sorry, you said something? No? Rushing mighty wind, then? Yes, tongues, before that. Before that, what, what do we see there? Yeah, there were tongues of fire, right? Which means it's like flames of fire. Okay, just imagine flames of fire. Okay, one flame of fire upon each head. Okay, <laughs> it's like that. So they're looking, maybe they looked around and say, hey, I see some fire on top of your head. And the other person saying, on your head also, right? It's like that, right? So the tongues of fire upon each person's head, so that we see. 
right? Divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Somebody raised a question. Yeah. Um, yeah, Shani, go ahead. Yeah, can you say um, what is um, Pentecost again, the day of Pentecost? Can you repeat that again, please? Um, just one second, Shani. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me again. I said, can you um, repeat what you um, what Pentecost is, the day of Pentecost? Can you repeat that? Uh, about the day of Pentecost? Yeah, yes. 50 days from the Feast of the First Fruits. This is another Jewish um, feast. So on the day of Pentecost, the disciples experienced this. They were all there. Um, gathered together. That's what uh, we read about verse 1. They were all in one accord. And this was the Feast of Pentecost. So, you know, when we read through Acts chapter 2, we see that there were people from all over, uh, from the surrounding areas. They had come to Jerusalem to observe this feast. So we read about that. Yeah? Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay, so then the third phenomenon that we see, supernatural thing that happened, is that they all spoke with other tongues. Okay, So which means, what does other tongues mean? It means they all spoke in another language. And uh, and it was, uh, it says here, oh yeah, thanks. So it says here that they all spoke with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, So what does that mean? That means the Holy Spirit gave them the words and they spoke it out. Okay, very simple. Holy Spirit gave them the words, and they spoke out those words. Okay, and it happened to be other tongues or other languages. Okay, and then of course, when we read through, we see that people they were there who knew these languages, and they were amazed, they were surprised because these Jews who who had not learned this language were actually speaking their language. And it talks about the kind of people, the group of people who were there, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, you know, Pontus, Asia, all these places. And they were, they had gathered to Jerusalem for this feast. And then so they were all amazed, right? They were all amazed. They were perplexed uh, and, you know, all kinds of, in fact, it says they were also Cretans and Arabs and so on, right? So all of them, they heard this what did they hear? They heard these people speaking about the wonderful works of God. It says uh, verse 11, Acts chapter 2, verse 11. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So that's how we, yeah, that's, that's something that's supernatural that happened. Okay. Okay. Uh, important point to note. Um, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Shani? Yeah, did you say that they were speaking, you said there were Jewish people there, so they were speaking their language. Is that what you were saying when they were speaking in tongues? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right? So um, they, they spoke in different tongues, different languages. And we also, uh, we can also uh, know that, um, you know, something that we notice here is that, that other people, some others also felt that they, uh, see, the various kind of reaction. Some were amazed, some were troubled. It says they were perplexed. And uh, and it, it also verse, four, verse 13 says that they were mocking, saying these people are drunk. Okay, So various uh, reactions. Now, they were making fun also, saying these people are drunk, which means what they heard was as if people were drunk and blabbering something. So they said these people are drunk. Okay, so all kinds of reactions um, to this supernatural event that happened uh, when they had gathered together. Okay, um, then let's look at uh, verse 17. Okay, so verse 17, verses 17 and 18. Now, this is actually spoken uh, by Peter. Okay, so when people say, hey, these guys are drunk, or they were when they were afraid, when they were amazed, so Peter stands up. And he addresses the crowd that has gathered. He stands up and in fact shares a, a, a word or gives a sermon. Now, 
Peter is referring to an Old Testament scripture here. Okay, and this is what this is from the book of Joel. And Peter says, verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my maid servants, men servants, and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Okay, so um, so he's referring to that Old Testament scripture, and he's he's saying in verse sixteen, if you see, he's saying this is what was spoken by Prophet Joel. Okay, so he's referring to what has happened just now, the outpouring, the supernatural event that has happened uh, because of the Holy Spirit. And this thing of rushing mighty wind, tongues of fire, and praying and speaking in other tongues. And he's, he's referring to that and he's saying, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Okay, And he's saying, um, he's just quoting that scripture and he's saying, it shall come to pass that God says, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Okay, So what will happen as an outcome of that? Can somebody read through and tell me? as an outcome, as a result of the Holy Spirit being poured out on all flesh. What do you see there? Verses 16 and 17. What is happening there? Yeah? Are they speaking in tongues? Oh, um, yeah, so that's, that's what is happening there. But if you, if you refer to the text, like what is the prophecy? What will, sorry, visions, dreams, prophesy, right? So these three things are, he says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That's one. Your old men, your, sorry, your young men shall see visions. That's the second thing. And the third thing that, and uh, your old men shall dream dreams. So as a result of this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he's saying there will be prophesying, there will be visions, there will be dreams, yeah. How do we distinguish between vision and a dream? Well, dream happens when we are asleep. That is the definition of a dream. You know, you are sleeping and then you have a dream. So vision can happen when you're awake as well. It's a vision. Something visual, it can be when maybe you're, you're praying and you have a vision. It's like uh, something visual. It could be a still something picture like based on scripture and you're saying you know it could be a uh, it could be a still thing or it could be something moving like the old pro like the old testament prophets ha you know had this vision in a vision i saw this so it could be that um but the vision can also happen in a dream you know that's in the dream they have a vision etc but uh, dreams are when we are asleep so that's the basic difference yeah okay so so we see this this uh, this phenomena that is because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so maybe we are saying, you know, I don't believe in visions. I don't believe that God can speak in dreams. Well, you know, this here's a proof, right? It's, it's an out. It's an outcome as a result of God pouring out His Holy Spirit. And also, we know, you know, this vision is the purpose. The dream is a purpose. You know, it's God communicating something, some truth. Um, it has purpose, it has direction, maybe it has warning, it has, you know, all these things, right? And prophecy, you know, you know, they will prophesy, meaning that they will speak forth uh, as the Holy Spirit gives them the message they will speak for, they will prophesy, okay? So all this because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, okay? Okay, let's move to uh, verse 33 then, same chapter, verse 33, okay? Um, so here, uh, Peter is still speaking, and he's again talking about the Holy Spirit. Verse 33, what does he say? Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God. Who is he talking about? He's talking about Jesus, right? Jesus' death, burial, resurrection. And he's saying he's exalted to the right hand of the Father. And having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this, which you now see and hear. Okay, so he's referring to, he's still talking about what is happening to them, what has happened to them, and he's still talking about that. So Peter is saying, you know, 
uh, he's talking about Jesus and uh, you know how you crucified him, uh, but he was resurrected. Now he's at the right hand of the Father, and then he says he sent the promise of the Father. Okay, this is the promise of the Father. The Father promised that the Holy Spirit will, you know, the Comforter, the Ho He will come. So this is the promise of the Father, and he says that he poured out this which you now see and hear. Okay, so he's saying this outpouring of the Holy Spirit is what you now see. Okay, it's you see some people doing some things. They are speaking in in other tongues. Yeah. You're seeing that, you, you're thinking that they are drunk because they are so caught up and then they are praising God. You know, maybe they're, I don't know, you know, what made them think that this person is drunk? No, that's a question, right? What do you think? You know, when you see somebody who's drunk, how do you decide this person is drunk? Huh? Sorry? Their actions, okay? The words, their behavior, okay. So, so when 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 these people saw, they they said, "Hey, these guys are drunk," which means that they were so caught up in worshiping God because that's what it says. No, they were actually talking about the, the praises of God, or they, they were praising God, talking about the wonderful works of God in other languages. So they were so caught up in doing that that people. For some reason, they thought that hey, these people are drunk. Okay, so so that is what. They, so he's so Peter is still talking about that. He's saying, you know, this is not the work of spirit, but it's work of the spirit. It's not the work of alcohol, but it's the work of the spirit, the Holy Spirit. And this is what you see, and this is what you also hear, because they are speaking, they are praising. In other languages, right, uh, and so and so, this is what Peter is suggesting. I mean, Peter is stating, right? Verse thirty-eight, um, and verse thirty-eight, Peter says something in response to a question. Okay, he's giving an answer. Okay, what is the question we see in verse thirty-seven? Okay, now when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and rest of the apostles, men. And brethren, what shall we do? So they hear the message that Peter shares. Peter starts by saying, this is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This was already prophesied by Prophet Joel. And then he talks about Jesus, why he came, what he did, etc. He was prophesied already you know, in, in the Psalms and so on. And, uh, and when they heard the message, the Bible says that they were cut to the heart, which means they were convicted. Right? They felt, oh, we've done something wrong. And they ask the question, what shall we do now? Okay, is there anything that we need to do? What shall we do? Right? And then Peter answers, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off as many as the Lord our God will call. Okay, so he's again saying something which is very important. He's saying in response to what shall we do? He's saying repent and be baptized. Repent, right? Turn from your ways. What does repentance mean? It means to turn from what we are doing. That is all. It means it, there could be remorse, yes. There could be, you know, there could be tears and there could be remorse and so on. Um, and he's saying, repent, make that turn. You know, you're living, you're going in one direction. You go in the opposite direction now. Repent, turn away. Okay, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now, you repent, but you need to believe. When, when, what does baptism mean? That means that you're giving your whole life to Jesus. You're believing that what he did for the on the cross, you believe that it's for you and you receive him, right? And that's what precedes baptism. So Peter's actually saying, you know, you need to believe that. You need to repent, you need to believe for the remission of sins. Baptism follows that, of course. 
Then he says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So he's talking about the same thing. He's saying, you know, we have received, we have received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And it, this is for you also. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, it is for everyone who would repent, who would believe in Jesus. Repent and believe in Jesus. So he said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, these are all the Jews and, you know, um, uh, uh, who could be speaking other languages, surrounding areas. Now, he's saying, this is for you. And then verse 39, he says something. What is it? He says, this promise is referring to the promise of the Father. He's referring to the this whole thing of outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He's saying, this promise is to you and to your children. Okay. But what do the children need to do? In order to receive the promise. Is the promise automatic? Okay, I believe. And then my children, you know, it's for me and my children. But what do they have to do? They also have to believe. They have to repent and believe. Right? So this promise is to you and to your children. And then he says, and to all who are afar off, as many as our Lord our God will call. Okay. So which means that people who are there in that vicinity, people who are not there, this promise of the Holy Spirit is for everyone. Okay, which means that this experience or you know, this truth, the, this experience is not only for the disciples, is not only for those who were living at that time. Very important. Because we might say, you know, this is for them, right? I'm now in the 20th century, in the 21st century. This is, you know, how can you say it's for me, right? Like Peter is saying, you know, this is for you, your children, and all those who are afar off, whom the Lord our God will call. Okay, okay. We'll uh, take a break here. I think there's a question by Sunny. Um, yeah. Is there any difference between Holy Ghost, Spirit, and Holy Ghost? Uh, yeah, they mean the same thing. It's just uh, the language, uh, some of the old language. Um, yeah, it's the same thing. Okay, we'll take a break and we'll come back. Thank you.
everyone welcome back